You've probably seen plenty of videos on YouTube showing you those under Eve permanent LED lights. And this video is going to be a slightly different spin on that and hopefully inspires you to do something kind of neat at your house. This video is sponsored by Eufy, specifically the Eufy Cam S3 Pro, and we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. I've seen a ton of those under Eve permanent LED videos. Chris Mayer comes to mind. The hookup has a fantastic video comparing all of them. And I've wanted to get some, but I'm gonna be honest with you, unless you have gables, I don't love the look. That's just my opinion, but I don't have any gables on my house. So I've kind of always steered clear of those LEDs because I thought it would look kind of dumpy on my house since I don't have any gables. But I have been thinking for a while on how to do lighting in my backyard. And I've experimented with some different spotlight setups and I had some shining up on the fence and some shining down and just never could land on anything that looked great and also had the functionality that I was looking for. My requirements were warm white. That's like the first thing that I want. You gotta have that really true, awesome looking warm white. I just love that. I do not like cool white on homes at nighttime. They also need to be able to make any color. So have a full RGB palette as well. They also need to be individually controllable. I got some spotlights that worked great, but they pretty much all had to be the same color. I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to alternate like for Christmas, red, green, something along those lines. And lastly, and this is just icing on the cake, not my number one priority, pretty much the last thing that really sealed the deal is, can they be controlled by WLED if I ever want to go that route? And that really only leaves a couple of options for under Eve LED lights that could do a true warm white and also be controlled with WLED. I went ahead and purchased the Eufy E120s because it met all the requirements that I wanted in doing this backyard project. I purchased these lights with my own money. This is not a sponsored video about the lights at all. We do have a sponsor for this video, which coincidentally and ironically is Eufy and they're showcasing a different product and they actually have no idea what's in this video itself, but the timing just kind of worked out this way. Eufy also has another model on the market. I think it's newer called the E22s. They're much more expensive. I have not seen anyone be able to hack them yet. And then after watching a few of the hookup videos, that easily helped me decide on the Eufy E120s. Hey, if you're liking this video so far at all, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. But again, these E120s are not for under the eaves of my house. I decided to put what's essentially a wooden channel or a decorative channel on top of my fence all the way around the backyard. And I actually think it looks really nice even during the daytime. But the purpose of that channel, the whole reason that I did that channel was so that I could hide under Eve LED lights up inside that channel. One major side note here is that pretty much all the under Eve LED lights have this double-sided tape adhesive backing and you should definitely use that to like temporarily get them up and you should come back and put brackets up. I tried a few different kinds. Some even came with the Eufy, which were great, but they're not enough. I wanna put a bracket on either side of each LED to hold it in place. Eufy comes with some in the kit, but I tried three different kinds off Amazon, which I'll link to all this stuff in the description below. One of them I thought was much better and I went ahead and did that on all of my lights after just a couple weeks, they all kind of started to fall down. Now, your mileage is gonna vary here because I'm not using them under the eave. Under the eave of your house is gonna stay much cooler than this channel on my fence. But I still suggest putting brackets on all of your lights. Your future self will definitely thank you. And again, I'm gonna link in the description to everything that I'm using, but those brackets especially will be linked in the description. So for this project, I used pressure treated one by eights. I ripped them down to these different sizes and I'll show you a cross section of what I came up with to make this channel on top of my fence. So I started nailing and screwing and cutting and doing that all the way around my entire fence so that I could eventually put those lights up. I originally tried to hack some Lumery under Eve LED lights and I just couldn't get them. They have a single chip, which I was really excited about. And in the app, they have warm white and RGB all in that one chip. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work with WLED and their app itself was pretty limited. You couldn't get individual control of the LEDs, which ultimately that's really what I want to kind of be able to get that full functionality if I ever want it. 
So like I said, the hookup kind of pointed me to these E120s because, and you might be familiar with this, but if you're not, let me inform you on what individually addressable LEDs are. That basically means each individual LED can be controlled independently. It can either be off or on or any color, and what the other ones are doing does not affect that individual one. So it's really infinitely customizable. But I had another dilemma here, and that is the length that I needed. So we've said the Eufy E120s, great. They're gonna be perfect because they're warm white, they can be done with WLED, but what about the distance that I need? And unfortunately, Eufy says, hey, the max distance that you can do on one of their power supplies is 100 feet. And I need much longer than 100 feet. Hey. So that's with the Eufy controller and they just lit up. So I'm gonna keep adding strings. It looks like it'll let me get nine strings hooked together. So I have six already up on the fence and then I plugged in the other six here and then you can see how we have three right there, or I guess three right here, one, two, three. I don't know why that is. So it let me get to 45 meters and then doesn't light up the rest for some reason. Could be some like really simple user error thing, but it's not lighting up. I'm sure you're not supposed to do that. I'm sure that that's drawing way more power from that stock controller than it's supposed to, but I just wanted to test it out. If your run is 100 feet or under, you're gonna be fine with the stock controller. You can pretty much do anything you want. If you want a single string to be longer than 100 feet, which I do, then let me tell you about the route that I ultimately ended up going with. My fence itself, I could have probably gotten away with doing the nine strings and been fine and maybe even used the Eufy controller. But I decided I wanted to include our swing set. I thought that would be kind of neat to have lights on the swing set as well because I'm not just going for accent lighting here, I'm going for functionality. I want the lights on the fence to be bright enough to provide some lights that kids could play in the yard and even play on the swing set. So to do that, I needed far more than nine strings, so the stock controller wasn't gonna cut it. The beauty of going with WLED and using your own power supply is that you can do something that's called power injecting and really almost make a string as long as you want, as long as you're providing power. After doing some testing, I ripped these lights down and realized that the power supply was giving 36 volts. You can also read the power supply, it says that as well. So I ordered my own 36 volt Meanwell power supply that had plenty of wattage to be able to supply all these LEDs with no problem. And I also ran an additional, basically an extension cord up in the channel next to the LEDs that would run all the way along the fence to the very end and then plug in to the end of the LEDs to be providing 36 volts at the end and at the beginning to try to balance the voltage across all of the strings. And that ended up working exceptionally well. Without the power injection, essentially if I try to turn the brightness all the way up, they start to flicker and cause all kinds of issues. But as soon as I attach the power injection and I plug that thing in, all of the flickering goes away. I can do any color at maximum brightness and it looks great so I did have to power inject. We'll get more into that later, but I also wanna say I did not do any soldering with a soldering iron, because I know that's gonna scare some people off. So we'll get more into that later. So if you're just gonna use the stock setup, then you probably don't need to watch anymore. This is great. You put them on your fence, you put them on your swing set, you have an alternate use for these under eve LED lights. But if you want to go longer or just not be tied to any individual brand's app and you wanna go the WLED route, then stick around, because I'm using a domestic automation controller. There's plenty of WLED controllers that come pre-programmed that you can find on Amazon. I went with the domestic automation. I'll link it in the description. And it was fantastic, very user friendly. And essentially the way that I set it up is that the controller itself needs five volts of power. You can use a five volt power supply to power the controller and then your 36 volt power supply to power the lights. For the Eufy lights, the E120s, they have three wires. That middle wire is going to be your data wire. That's telling the LEDs what to do. The wire that has the stripe on it, the dashed stripe is your positive and the one that's left is the negative. So it's really as simple as just hooking the positive and negative into your power supply so that you're providing the 36 volts. 
and then taking your data line, hooking that into the domestic automation as well as the negative into the domestic automation controller, and then you have full control of all your LEDs. I'm gonna touch on this very quickly, but you go into WLED and the settings that you're gonna need is that you're gonna set the LED type to SK6812 slash WS2814s. It's gonna be the RGBW essentially is what you're picking. And then the color order you're gonna want is gonna be BRG, and then you're going to swap the W and G, and then that'll give you the proper control. Huge shout out to the hookup for figuring that out. I did try for a while, and I was like, certainly someone online has done this already. Sure enough, the hookup already had us covered. So some cool things with WLED, you just set your string length and then you're good to go. One of the things I wanted to be able to do, and this is kind of what pushed me the WLED route other than the length, I wanted my swing set to be its own segment and then the fence to be a separate segment. So the fence can be doing one thing and the swing set be doing another. So for instance, I could have the fence set to Christmas, so it's red and green or red and white or something like that, but yet kids wanna play on the swing set. So the swing set could just be warm white, providing light there, and then the fence giving you more accent holiday lighting or something along those lines, or Halloween or whatever you wanna do, the possibilities are endless. Okay, let's talk power injection. I use these little shrink wrap things that have solder inside. So essentially you just take the wires, you put them in both ends, you get a heat gun on it, and then it'll solder those two wires together. That's how I did all my power injection connections. These E120s can only have an extension cord of about 10 feet in between them. So I didn't need one of the extension cords, so I cut one of the ends off so that I could plug that end into the very end of my run. So I took the positive and negative wire on that extension piece that I cut off, and then I bought this basically low voltage garden light, it's 14 gauge, and that's what I ran in the channel all the way around. And then to solder those two together, I used those little shrink wraps, put those on there, hit it with the heat gun so that it would solder them together. And then I just stripped off the ends of that gardening wire, and then I hooked those into my power supply and that's really only the major connections that I did. Everything else I did was just with those little snap connectors and is super straightforward, especially because the domestic automation controller, it just has these little toggles that you like push down and then you slip a wire in and let go. It's perfect and so easy to use. And most people aren't gonna get into this power injection type thing, but I just wanted to let you know that with WLED, you can go over 100 feet, really no problem, but you are gonna have to supply more power to this line. Overall, I couldn't be more happy with the result. I really like the way that it looks on the fence and being able to customize it for Christmas or Halloween and also being to separate out the fence versus the swing set, I really think is awesome. Be sure to check all the links in the description. Like I said, I've got it all covered of everything I used. So if you're interested in just one part of it, just check the description because it's all there. Now that we're finished talking about the outside of my house, specifically the backyard, I'm gonna take you up into my attic, into this crawl space, and you'll see that I have spray foam insulation. This can make running cables a nightmare between outside and inside. Typically that eave space would be nice and open and you can get a cable up into your crawl space into the attic no problem. There's one specific corner of my house that I have not been successful in running cables for a security camera. Well, that's where the Eufy Cam S3 Pro comes in. It's a wireless camera system. They also have built-in solar panels on the cameras themselves. The cameras have very large batteries and in combination with a large solar panel on top of the camera, they can run indefinitely depending on the lighting conditions. With just one hour of sunlight on that solar panel per day, this camera can run indefinitely. The Eufy Cam S3 Pro also has a dual motion detection system, and this is combining radar and passive infrared, which allows it to accurately identify human movement and reduce false alerts by up to 99%. Now you've heard me in the past criticize wireless cameras. Specifically, there's some nuance here because most wireless cameras are recording to the cloud. You don't have any local storage. Well, this Eufy Cam S3 Pro system has a home base and it's expandable up to 16 terabytes of storage so that you're storing your footage locally. I am a huge fan of you being in control of your footage so that if you lose internet or something like that, 
you're not gonna lose the recording. Also, the app is great for scrubbing through footage to find an event. I'm a huge fan. You just drag across the timeline, it's very responsive, and it updates very quickly. It's really easy to find events, and it's HomeKit compatible. Another feature of this camera is the night vision. It has what Eufy calls max color vision, and it makes what would be traditionally very dark footage look near daylight. And that's even without a spotlight. Now this camera is shooting in 4K and it does have a spotlight if you need it. And if you're not a fan of that, it also has traditional IR night vision, which looks great as well. Now you might be thinking, look, this sounds great, but my specific setup is gonna be in the shade or it's under an eave or just somewhere that I'm not gonna get sunlight. So how do we handle that? Well, this system does include one external solar panel to give you more flexible mounting options. So you can mount the solar panel somewhere that's maybe much more in the sun versus the camera, and it can get that hour of sunlight in the day, and the camera can be in the shade nonstop. I had pretty unique needs, but I love the flexibility of this camera. So that corner of my house that I haven't been able to access or run wires to was great for this, and also out on a tree in my yard looking back at my house. I would never run ethernet out to a tree, but given that all I had to do was screw the camera into the tree and that was it for the install, it's working perfectly. So click the link in the description for the Eufy cam and enjoy 15% off. As always, thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. I know you've got zillions of other videos that you could be watching and you stopped by here to watch this one. I'm very grateful. Don't forget to thumbs me up and we will see you next time.